Joy, let me go to you. I want to, there's two, two questions here we've been asking in these early primary contests from the exit polls and just wanted to get your uh, read on these because we've talked about them a lot. I think they sort of serve as proxy questions in some ways. Number one, did Joe Biden legitimately win in 2020? That's one of the exit polls. Um, yes gets 32 percent of the folks voting in South Carolina, according to our exit polls. No gets 65 percent. So two thirds, one thirds there. And then yeah. a question about if Trump is convicted, is he fit to be president? Should he face criminal conviction in any one of the outstanding 91 indictments he faces? Um, you get, again, very similar numbers. Yes, he's still fit at 65. No, he's not at 32. Again, a sort of two-thirds, one-third. What's your read on that? Right. And I think that you can go back to what Steve was just saying about the makeup of this electorate. I mean, this is a, what, 92 percent white, overwhelmingly evangelical Christian primary electorate in South Carolina. And I think writ large around the country, that is the way they think. I mean, even among the independent voters who are about, what, 21 percent of this electorate, it's like almost a 50-50 question as to whether President Biden is a le the legitimate president of the United States. That is what the Republican Party is now. It is a baseline condition of being a base Republican right now that you do not believe that the 2020 election was legitimate. You believe that Donald Trump is the rightful president of the United States. You believe that he's the most electable candidate. That's also in these exit polls, more so than Nikki Haley, which there's no empirical data that supports that. And you believe that he should be president regardless of whether he is convicted of a felony which he very likely will be in the next month. I think that there's nothing new here in terms of what MAGA voters and Republican voters think. But I think because South Carolina is such a heavily white evangelical conservative state and it's so overwhelmingly a Republican state, I was talking with somebody uh, from the, uh, the, the, the Nikki Haley world about whether or not there was any success that Democrats may have had in getting Democratic voters to come out and vote because it is an open primary and try to vote for Nikki Haley. Uh, and their response was, there are almost no Democrats in yeah, this state other than Jim Clyburn. <laughs> so they're like, that wouldn't have helped at all. This is who the Republican base is right now. Um, uh, Alex, one of the things that's, that's funny about these, uh, these exit polls to me always is, um, like, they're, <laughs> it's not like people like have these different views on the issues and they're adding them up and then tallying like which candidate right like it's working the other way around right yeah. that like the the candidate choice this is the sort of i feel like the dominant theme we've seen is the candidate choice the sort of feeling of affection loyalty devotion to donald trump is the kind of causal condition yeah, it's that the organizing that, principle that's right, of everything that produces else. the the subsequent result yeah i mean i would say from all the reporting on the ground you hear this like the south carolina primary was once described as a knife fight in a phone booth that yep. is where that I, I believe according to jonathan martin that's yep. where that phrase comes from right this is a place that makes campaigning a blood sport and that has not been the case this year and there is you know a lot of reporting about the kind of grudging acceptance that trump is going to win this thing and be the nominee and i think we shouldn't like sort of let that lie on its own it's a sign of a party in decline right the fact that there is widespread sort of discontent generally um a feeling that trump's mouth has gotten the party in trouble even if they like his policies but that nobody is actively trying to do anything about it that they are resigned to this individual having said that as much as we talk about this electorate being composed of a group of voters that are not the bread and butter for the haley campaign she has not really tried to campaign the way i think someone who really wanted to win the state of Carol south carolina would right this is someone who did not make the outreach to the party apparatus in any kind of timely fashion this is someone who really i'm not going to say abandoned but had national aspirations and was un very clear about them after her term of governor ended and you know she didn't headquarter herself near columbia she lives on right. kiowa island she's very much someone whose fortunes and horizons lay beyond the state and so as she's come back to it you know, there yeah. is anecdotally a lot of distrust. There is a sense that she has abandoned the state, and, and it is not the state's not going to return the favor. Well, and there's also, Lawrence, I, I'd be curious to get your thoughts on this, because I also think that there is an interesting thing, another theme we've seen, right, with is the kind of inversion of the all politics is local of our age, which is all yeah. politics is national, right? right? So right. The, the Iowa, where, you know, where it's like the, the voters there expect you to visit every county ten times mm -hmm. and come to their living room and actually know every voter, right? And Ron DeSantis tried to do that and Donald Trump was like no I'm going to my civil fraud trial in in New York like that 
Okay, but people uh, it, don't want to meet Ron DeSantis. Well, don't that was also the problem. Town was the problem. But Nikki, in Nikki Haley's case, it's like there is a time in politics I feel like that's a bit bygone where coming to your home state would be an enormous yeah. ace in the hole that just seems to amount to nothing well, now. Tr Trump erased that from yeah. our politics because Lindsey Graham dropped out of the race uh, in 2016 so that he wouldn't lose his own state. Right, that's because right. That's, that's the right. one thing you always wanted to avoid right. in presidential primaries is, you know, don't lose your own state, drop out beforehand if you have to. The, the Chris, what you just did on the twisting all politics is local, uh, which hadn't occurred to me uh, in quite those terms, is, is perfect. Uh, all politics is Trump in the Republican Party, and that is all national. And and I don't think, I think if Nikki Haley had had followed uh, Alex's playbook within South Carolina politics religiously, she wouldn't get one more endorsement or one more vote. But it, it was gone, you know, it was gone. Trump took it away. Lindsey Graham, you know, proved that Trump took it away. And so, and all you're left with is a party uh, where it's not Donald Trump, it's not Lindsey Graham, the governor, it's not those people. The Trump voters control every yeah. single Republican official. None of them are afraid of Donald Trump. All of them are afraid of Trump voters. Mm -hmm. And none of them can be elected without Trump voters.